My journey has really just begun. But I was already discovering that an entrepreneur's business is very much a reflection of who they are as people. Michelle Moan is incredibly tenacious, but I wondered where her relentless drive had come from and if her formula for success could last forever. At first glance, Richard Reed's approach appears counterintuitive, concentrating on the good his brand can achieve rather than the profit. But we've also heard from his childhood just how calculating he can be. Most successful businessmen and women I know can pinpoint exactly where and when their entrepreneurial journey began. To find out where that was for Richard and Michelle, I'm visiting places that lie at opposite ends of the country and of the social spectrum. Michelle is taking me on a tour of her hometown of Gallagate. You're getting into the east end of Glasgow, really down to earth, hard working uh, people. And Richard is showing me round Cambridge, the city where his entrepreneurial journey began. In Glasgow, I was to find the rags to riches cliche for real. Lots and lots of memories growing up here, and this is where I started my first um, business when I was 10, 10 years old. You were 10? Yeah, so delivering the papers in the East End. And then when I was 11, I had 17 teenagers working for me. Um, so you had a bunch of people working for you at 11? I did, yeah. The first stop would be Michelle's secondary school, a place she left without any qualifications at the age of 15. This is it? This is it, yeah. This was where she was told that a future working down the local supermarket was the best she could expect. Wow. How's it, what does it feel like to be back here? Is Very it, strange. Does it? Yeah, but um, what's your best memory here? My best memory, um, I don't really have nice memories to be honest with you. I, I, I really struggled at school academically, uh, I was awful, um, and I think always been told, you know, you're a failure and you'll never do well. And I suppose everyone around me kept saying, Michelle, you can't do this and you can't do that. And I used to say, why? Why do you say you can't? Surely you can. Surely we can find a way. And I used to challenge everyone. Were you bullied? Um, kind of, yeah. I was a bit. Um, yeah, because I wore my uniform and so you, were you my always and dad smart? were always, no, you wear your uniform. And, and what about your teachers? Did they have a, a little inkling that Michelle Moan was going to become a successful entrepreneur? I don't think so. I remember when I was 15, I had to go and see my careers teacher. I said, I want to be an entrepreneur. And she said, what does that mean? It could have been a determination to prove her teachers wrong that drove Michelle in those early days. But I was about to discover even deeper reasons for her desire to be an East End girl done good. I always wanted my own room and um, my dad cut half of a single bed. He put in the broom cupboard and lowered the ceiling and I put sticker, uh, stickers which were all stars above it and I loved it so much. The next stop on our tour was the house Michelle grew up in. So this, this is it. it, yeah. So which was the actual house? Which one? Um, well, first of all, I grew up there, one up. So first floor? Just first floor, yeah. Okay. And then my dad, um, when he was my age, got confined to a wheelchair. Uh, paralysed from the waist down, a disease, hemangioma, blood vessels in the spinal cord. So he couldn't obviously get up the stairs in a wheelchair. So we moved to 54 ground right. Just here. And that was the first time I had my own bedroom. Wow, this, this is, is it, it. 54. Yeah, that's that was my mum and dad's bedroom. I, I dare you to ring the bell. Oh no, I can't do that. Henderson. No, maybe it's ground two. <gasps> What's that? Should I, I go in? I promise I've not teed anything up. Hey, up. Hello. <laughs> Hi there. Come in. Is that okay? Yeah, come. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> 
wow, I can't believe this is my old house. And that that is the bathroom, isn't it? That's the bathroom. That, that was your room. That was your room. That and was my room. Oh, <laughs> this is my own. Do you know? I loved this bedroom. This was my first bedroom. This is your bedroom. And I kept it so neat and tidy. From this tenement, Michelle embarked on a career in publicity that began with occasional work as a model. By the age of 26, she was head of marketing for a national brewery. Her old neighbour, Tricia, still lives next door. Hello, you? Oh my goodness. And has documented her remarkable rise to success. Oh, great, Michelle. You got pictures? I've actually got paper cuttings as well, but I didn't want to bring them out. Look at that. <laughs> terrible, terrible model. Terrible. <laughs> Michelle, talk to me. No. You've kept this quiet. No. You talk can't no. See that. Thank you very much. It, it proves that anybody that's got a dream and if they follow it through, they can do it. That's true. Michelle was just basically working class and she'd done it all proud. I could see in Michelle's eyes how much this visit to her old house meant. But facing up to her past wasn't going to be easy. Over dinner, I wanted to find out more. What's your, what's your earliest bad memory in here? I would say that there was lots of tough times that I try and blank out, and that was the illness of my dad. That was my mum, you know, going through depression, losing my wee brother. You know, I always used to go to bed crying, I'm not going to have my dad in the morning, and it was just, it, it was horrible. And how old were you when your brother died? Um, I was about eight years old. Yeah. So I remember all of it. You do? Every single bit of it, yeah. Uh, You've come from a hard background. You've spent all of your life trying to get out of it. So there's something that's, that makes Michelle special. Do you see yourself as special? Or do you um, see yourself as lucky? I grew up with, you know, bad news after bad news and I didn't want that. I will not accept when people say, because you're from the East End, you cannot be successful. In contrast, the hard work of Richard's parents to fund his private education paid off. He became one of the elite few to make it to St John's College, Cambridge. So we haven't been in here for 20 years. He shared a room with Adam Ballon and John Wright. Together, they would become the co-founders of the famous smoothie brand. So this is the canteen? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. The innocent canteen. Three meals a day for three years here, pretty much. Yeah. Is that right? Dinner. And yeah, but this is definitely where it started, because the, the three of us became friends literally from the first night in college, and we all met in the college bar, and I think we sort of bonded, didn't we, over a, a, a sort of a love of, you know, <laughs> nocturnal. Beers. Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and what did you do? Because I know you did geography, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Was that because you couldn't think of anything else to do? <laughs> did the honest answer is, when I was looking at the different, um, the different options, the only topic that had less lectures was land economy, which had seven hours a week, and geography had eight hours a week, and everything else had more, and so I went for geography. <laughs> OK. So what, I you... did economics. Oh, wow, OK. Uh, I did manufacturing, so getting stuff made. It's almost like perfect, doesn't it? You've got somebody that economics knows how to run a business. You've got somebody that actually doesn't really care what they did, because they just wanted to have fun. And then you've got somebody that Great. actually knows the whole manufacturing process to put it all together. <laughs> that's, that's interesting, though, isn't it? Because it does fit. Mm. No, we, I think it was, a, it was a sort of lucky, fortunate, you know, uh, part of the formula. What you had here was three really close friends that had very different skills, but had a complete shared sort of set of values and, and, and vision and things that they wanted to achieve. And, and that's, I think, uh, that was the, 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 the starting place for the whole business, where the success has come from. It's incredibly rare that three mates thrown together at university go on to create a multi-million pound business. To try and work out just how it happened, the boys took me to meet Colin, their residential porter. So they were pranksters then? They enjoyed their college life. Eh? That's to say, they kept the porters on the toes all the Kept time. Fit. But the porters <laughs> loved them. 
the time we caught them, they always said, we're innocent. <laughs> 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 oh, That's where you got the name from. Where is it? Exactly. Yeah. Richard's business story begins here in Cambridge, in a dark and dingy basement. Well, this is it. Yes, this is it. That's an underground garage. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the enterprising trio transform this boiler room into the most popular student nightclub for miles around. We'd be turning people away at the door. I think people, he, people were coming for the free pizza, not the music. <laughs> that, was our, that was our dreadful original strategy that we offered, offered free pizza at nine o'clock to try and get people down early. And what happened is a load of rugby boys turned up, ate the free pizza, and then left. And so we were left with an empty nightclub and. Full of pizza boxes. Isn't <laughs> <laughs> this is where it all started. I had a lot of fun while you did it. Yeah, absolutely. And that, has, that doesn't seem to have changed much. No, it's, it's, the, it's just one of the best bits of you know, you're doing it with your two closest mates, so it's just such good fun. Both Richard and Michelle wanted to create better futures for themselves because of the circumstances that surrounded them. Richard desperately wanted to make his parents proud and repay the sacrifices they had made to give him a world-class education. And Michelle was driven by a desire to do better than those around her. Oh, how nice is that? So what is it that links all entrepreneurs? Is there a formula for making millions? If you ask the investors who discovered Michelle and Richard, it wasn't their business plans that impressed them. Maurice Pinto bought 18% of Innocent for a quarter of a million pounds. I think care less about what the business and the industry is or what the business idea is and more about the people. I thought they were extremely bright, extremely articulate. Let me say it's the best management team I've ever worked with. Sir Tom Hunter backed Ultimo with £100,000. You can look at the business plan, you can look at the numbers and, you know, you've read as many business plans as me and none of them really do what they ever say they're going to do. You're really only investing in the person. We saw something in Michelle, that determination, that look in, in, in her eye, and you then, you then make an investment in the person. It's reported that both investors made very healthy returns when they sold their shares. In London, Scotland's first billionaire was giving me a further insight into what has pushed Michelle Moan to succeed. Even though Michelle puts forward this, you know, she's, she, she, she can be quite fragile. And um, the thing people don't understand about most entrepreneurs is, is that we are, we are driven by self-doubt. A lot of successful people who outwardly you think are so confident, but we're all trying to prove ourselves all the time. Yeah. For my final encounter, Michelle had invited me to her Mayfair apartment so I could have a glimpse into her private world. It was here I hoped to uncover the characteristics that have brought her success. Hello. Hello. Peter. Welcome How to are you? Wow. Fine. How are you? But nothing could have prepared me for the obsessive attention to detail that awaited. Okay, can you come? Look at that. That's amazing. Everything has its place. That shouldn't be dirty, is it? No. Everything has to be organised, so everything's in order. Five, twenty, fifties. Yeah. Same hangers. Yeah. Every single one the same colour. Everything has to be the same. And the kids have got KPIs that they don't muck the hangers up and... <laughs> you give your kids... I'm not going to tell KPIs. you KPIs. KPIs, Key Performance Indicators which yeah. are business drivers yeah. to measure against for success. You do that with your own kids. And the people you in the don't. house, yeah, I do. If your drawers are not organised and your cupboards are not organised and your family are not organised, then your life is a mess. You have to compartmentalise everything in your life and you don't change between business and your personal life, which is different. A lot of people... Really? Yeah, a lot of people are very different in business to they are when they're at home. To be successful, you have to be able to exert control, but Michelle takes it to another level. 
There must be a reason why she has to organise every detail around her. And the words of Tom Hunter were still ringing in my ears. Is it self-doubt that makes her like this? Are you proud of yourself? Um, I think I am now. I think now that I've lost, you know, all the weight and I'm getting fit, you know, I'm, I'm getting my life in order. Um, I was punishing myself for 10 years and I just kept eating and eating and eating and eating because I did not feel that I should have money and success. But I'm, I feel I'm a lot more content, but I still don't think I've made it yet. So would you say that you're lonely or in search of something? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe you're doing these things to perhaps fill a void or fill something. I suppose it, being an entrepreneur is very lonely. You'll know it yourself. Um, where, you know, you'll take all the worry and everything else on your own shoulders and... Um, Do you feel pressure? Do oh, feel I feel pressure 24-7. Yeah. yeah. And I can't imagine life without the pressure, to be honest. I'm trying to understand the psyche behind an entrepreneur. There's a lot of similarities I see in me and you. Mm -hmm. um, I see that you have to have control. I can mm -hmm. see that you are quite manipulative. I can see that you're very forthright and you know where you want to get to. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I can also see a lot of insecurity. When I was last in your offices, you said something to me that hit me quite hard uh -huh. because I've never spoken to another entrepreneur before that's actually said, yeah, I, I considered committing suicide and I was yeah. in a very dark place in my, in my life. Yeah. How, take me back to that time of how you felt to get to that point. I just think that I tried my hardest and I suppose I was failing and... Um, Who were you letting down? Uh, I was letting down my family, you know, and... It's the fear of going back to how I grew up, of, I suppose, struggling. Um, but I just, I, I just could not see a way out. I just couldn't. When you took me back to the East End of Glasgow, uh -huh. there was a quite a touching moment when I got to see the neighbours and you got to see your house. Mm. But there's a lot about it that almost says, I can't remember a lot of things. I'm not um, blanking it all out, but I suppose that, you know, that we're growing up and with my wee brother dying and my father, you know, being confined to a wheelchair at the age of 38. And I just thought, woof. You know, and it started to all come back to me. Oh dear, I said I wouldn't cry. <laughs> um, but, but maybe it was all that just bullying and heartache that's made me fight to get to here. Oh, I'm it, so sorry. Don't apologise because it's something to be proud of and it gives a lot of people inspiration. And the reality is that an entrepreneur is a, a makeup of all different things. You've been through a journey, haven't you? Yes. And I think that everybody sees that journey as it's easy, it's glamorous. We see Michelle walking down red carpets, we see her on magazines looking beautiful. But the hardness and the hardships of the journey. And I would say that the next few years, in pursuit of happiness and success, I think you're going to achieve it. Thank you. I really do. I hope so. <laughs>